a guy that was a jock in high school but ended up becoming a huge nerd you know someone that's not afraid to make a fool of themselves on the internet and someone that likes to shoot polaroid a little too much did i say huge nerd you know just an ordinary everyday guy well that's me i'm just another chris what is up everybody how's it going it's gonna be back i didn't do a show last week technically I did one on Sunday, and then I didn't do one throughout the week, so I don't know if that counts or not. But, hello, how's it going, man? We got some people in the chat, and chatting with you guys. Oh, hey, what's up, Matt? Haven't seen you around in a while. What is going on, man? How you doing? Uh, also, if you uh, let me know how the audio is working for you, because I have something a little special that I'm going to show you today. Actually, I'll do a quick teaser right now. I am using this guy. We're going to talk about it. I figured, why not? I'll get into that in just a second, but let me know how it sounds. Uh, yeah, I thought about adding a little extra behind the scenes in today's video, uh, and we'll get to that in just a second. There's a lot of cool things I want to go over today. It is Mail Time Live? Yeah, that's where we talk about things that have come in the mail uh, this week. <laughs> and there has been quite a few things that have come through the old uh, mailbox set up here at the Just Another Chris headquarters. Uh, and so I want to share with you a little bit about what I've got. Uh, I, I, always, I say this every time, but it's true. I change things a lot. Uh, my comments, if I can read them, are over here, but not, uh, they're over here today. And you sound a bit lower than the intro. Okay, that's to be expected. I kind of thought that. This thing is a little soft on the audio, so I have to work on that. But I don't even know if I'm gonna be keeping it in the setup. So, but good to know. I thank you for your feedback. But I have this new tray system that has my, you know, camera switchers and things, as well as my comments. I don't know if I'm gonna keep it. I really have to turn my neck to see it. And that causes my audio to change because, you know, microphone's over here. There's no microphone over here. I gotta talk louder. But anyway, I'm always changing th things up in here, testing things. But that's not what we're talking about today. Um, we've got some cool things on deck here. we got some cool Polaroid items that have come through the mail. Of course, I've got instant photography stuff. This stuff always coming through the doors here. But I also want to take a quick moment just to do a quick reminder that my book is up for grabs. Uh, you still have time to grab it. If you don't know what this is or know much about it, I announced last week that there's going to be a two-week pre-order on my book. Uh, yes, so if you want to grab this, I left some links in the description. There's also a paperback version 
if, you know, if you're into that sort of thing. But the plus side to getting the uh, hardcover, this is the archival version of the book. And uh, what that means is I have, like I've added some, but there's over 10 thing, like 10 artifacts, I'm calling them, inside the book, as well as other cool things. Like you can watch videos in here. There's, as, as you go through the book, you'll find, let me find a cool page. Here's a page. You'll find QR codes throughout the book and you're able to watch fun videos. Uh, and then of course you'll find other inserted pieces, some really random ones and some just, here's a cool photo about the page. It's pretty, pretty neat. There is a link in the description if you wanna grab it. There's still time. You have till Thursday. Yeah, Thursday and then the, the, the archival version of this, I'm calling it, cut off and done. But not only where you get the uh, all the cool things, but everyone that orders the book in this time period will also get, even with you know the paperback version, you'll get this too, a fun little cool sticker pack, as well as, I haven't announced this yet, I'm announcing this probably next week, but the first monthly print club edition for patron members. You'll also get this included with your book pre-order. Pretty cool, and it'll be signed. So that's gonna be fun. We got a lot of comments up in here. Uh, Matt says, audio sounds good. Thank you so much. I'm talking a little bit louder now just because of this you know, setup that I've got, but thank you so much for the feedback. I appreciate it. Um, but overall, good, cool shirt, by the way. Thanks, Rico. I got a surprise for you in just a second. And what's up, Brian? Add an echo or sound like a 50. Hello, how's it going? I can't say it. Shush! Echo, shut up! <laughs> That's why I don't say that word in here often, because it does that. As I'm getting all worked up, my, my, my dog down here is freaking out. But I do have Echo, and I'll get into this in just a second, some other fun things with this. I won't annoy you with that sound effect. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, so the book is up for grabs right now, if you want to grab it. And there's also a cheaper version <laughs> of this book with or to say in paperback version yeah. got till thursday to order these they'll also be signed if i haven't mentioned and e both versions come with this uh fun little pack if you have no interest in it that's totally cool if you have interest in just joining the monthly print club you can do that too there's a link in the description for that as well helps me create cool things for you guys and support you know me buying stuff so you guys can watch it all comes back to you <laughs> but anyway there is the book so i'll give you guys an update on what's going on there Consider checking it out. Links are in the description. There you go. Oh, what, what's up, Caesar? What's going on, man? Welcome to have you in the house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll get into some other fun things with this in just a second. Um, why not? Actually, let's go with this right now before we dive into the Polaroid items. Or should I do these first? They're pretty quick. Let me know. I just got some cool Polaroid items. But I am, I'm pretty excited about this little thing. Um, it seems pretty cool. Has one, two major things I don't like about it. So maybe I'll just talk about it right now. All right, so what we got here is, I, I, I can't pronounce it. Ma mayo, mayo, man, ma mayo. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. But oops, that's not the right button. That's the right button I'm looking for. This was technically kind of somewhat sent to me for review in a way. I mean, I still had to pay for it, but the way they have it worked out is like I get reimbursed type of thing. I thought I'd at least check it out, but here's the review of this. Um, whoa, comment sent. What's going on? What's happening? Oh, I'm missing comments. That's why I don't like having it over here. I guess I'll change that later. Uh, hey, it's not cheaper. It's more affordable for poor artists like me. Oh, Okay, that's one way to put it. Um, so there you go. <laughs> I, and I actually, um, I'm gonna announce it next week, because I'm going, like I said, I'm gonna be announcing the official announcement about this for uh, Patreon members next week, I'll say. Um, and uh, I'll probably do a giveaway of both versions of the book, the hardcover and the softcover. So we'll, 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 more on that later, I guess. Uh, mayonnaise. That was was that. Did I say what's up with that mayonnaise? So here we go. This right. Oh, I see mayo. <laughs> I got it. Um, so this is pretty cool. It has two things I don't like about it. Um, I, I know this is a little bit different than I've normally talk about here. I normally talk about the fun instant photography related items, but if you go back a few videos, not a lot, but 
a few. <laughs> You, this is content that used to kind of be on this channel it was fun techie stuff filmmaking things and I kind of want to add it sprinkle that in a little bit every now and then uh, So here we go is problems going to go do a brief cool cover of this because it's pretty neat But it has two things I don't like about it one. It's not XLR. So you can't run XLR mics into it without phantom power I should say I Am technically running an XLR mic into this? But I have a fancy Rode NTG 4 plus because it has a built-in battery so I can run phantom power within itself, but I have to recharge it. Um, and then the other thing is the audio coming out of this thing is super, super duper low. I have to put some massive gain in my streaming software to get to, or just come to a normal decent level, which adds a lot of background noise, which is frustrating. So I don't like that uh, too much, um, but it's pretty cool. You can do some fun things with it. Like check this out. What's up guys? How's it going? You can change your voice a little bit. <laughs> I thought about using this voice for Astro. What do you think? Give him Astro's voice. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can do some cool things like that. There's these generic sound things, which honestly are not my favorite about the thing. They're pretty cheesy. Uh, like, like this thing's super cheesy. Can you feel it? Super, super cheesy. How do I stop it? <laughs> Here we go. Hey, what's up, Sarah? Yes, you probably have seen me around live streaming pros. Um, I am the videographer, editor, shooter person over there. I work with Floria all the time. Uh, I've known her for like four years or so. So, that's where you probably seen me before. <laughs> uh, there we go. Come on now. I need to put my comments back over here. This was so much easier. I'm gonna actually do it right now. Come on now. I have a little fancy arm that, there we go. There we go. Move this baby over here. Am I not in, okay, cool. There we go. I can see things better now. So much more natural feeling in my opinion. But this thing I have for the comments or to hold my iPad is super janky. That's why I'm always looking for something a little bit better. What's up Caesar? You, uh, you need to start every live with that soundboard. Can you feel it? It's horrible. That's the thing is awful. It's terrible. Um, it also has an applause. That's, that's okay. But this weird gunshot one. That one's alright. A little booing action. <laughs> That's an awkward button. I think crickets would have been way better for that, but I don't know. A slapping and then a cheering. That one's alright. Reminds me of the old Halo days, you know, when you get a headshot. <laughs> the, but honestly, the only thing I really care about from all of this thing is the voice pitches. So you can change your voices like it's pretty funny, right? You can really change your voices quite a bit. And like, this is probably my favorite one. I don't know. I don't know about you, but it's pretty funny. I made some funny things. With it. And then you talk like a robot. It's kind of fun. And it has auto tune, so if I want to start like singing, I can start singing. It's like auto tune. It's got different versions of like auto tune, auto tune. I don't know. It's pretty fun. You can do some cool things. You can do like echo, like really big. I'm talking to a big room. It's pretty fun. I thought about incorporating some of this into the live streams. I don't know. I thought it'd be kind of fun every now and then. So I thought I'd at least show you guys some like behind the scenes stuff that you don't normally see around here. And plus it came in the mail today and you know, it's mail time live. So I at least wanted to show it. Well, I got this a couple days ago. It also came with a mail or a microphone. It's okay. It's not really that great, but it's a great little starter, but you can also like hook your phone directly into this thing and, uh, like basically record a podcast which is neat and it doesn't require like being plugged in you can run off battery power so caesar this would be awesome for you and your guys's podcast if you're still watching you guys should pick one of these up i love to definitely no i didn't I, for, I forgot to put a link in the description for this but if you guys want to get one they're not even that expensive i think it's like 100 bucks for this so it's, that's a pretty good deal um uh, yeah 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 Pretty cool. 
and yeah that's it i just want to do a quick overview of it i still have to do like a full in-depth like full testings of it but i don't know what do you guys think so far is it cool should i keep it in the production or should i get rid of it oh and rico you still in here rico you still here let me know but i got a surprise for you uh, boom, boom. Yes, it is me, Sarah. Hello. You'll probably see me a lot more over there too. I mean, even, like I've been behind the scenes a lot. I kind of stick around there. I make uh, usually just a small appearance, like within the monitor screen type of thing. I'm, I'm, like as I'm holding the camera, you know, just kind of like randomly. But uh, I might be popping in more often, which is pretty cool. Um, do, 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 I guess Caesar left. Oh man, not here. This is what you need for your podcast, man. <laughs> All right, enough about that. Let's move on to a couple of the Polaroid items that popped in the mail to, uh, recently this week, I should say. Oh, you are up in here. You do want to see it? Okay, okay, okay. There you go. <laughs> There's your Batman. Quit bugging me. There's your Batman. <laughs> I, I, I do have one in here. I, I couldn't find any of the action figures. I just have the little Lego guy. So, he'll stay over here for the rest of the show. Right there. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I've been watching you since you had the collectible store. Oh, awesome, Sarah. I thought, you know, I thought your name actually looked really, really familiar. Yeah, that was a while ago. Um, that would have been in, well, I sold the store in 2018. So, a little bit before that. I've been doing live streaming since, like, 20... 16 I want to say maybe I've been streaming for about yeah about 2016 2015 somewhere in there for the store so a little while ago oh you are here Caesar yes get this thing then we I, I, I recommend it for you guys it's cheap it works cool you can do fun effects and I left one thing out you can actually program buttons with this like down here you can record loopbacks and then have like custom things which is pretty neat um, but this way, you guys can up your guys' production for not very much money. Uh, and it ha you can use your phone. You can plug your phones right into this. Do uh, phone call podcasts right into it. It's pretty, pretty cool. You also have to run an external auto recorder, though. It doesn't record internally, unfortunately. So, there's that. Uh, it only <laughs> yeah, it only took four weeks. I know. I kept forgetting. I thought about just never doing it. Just being like, like a thing. Like forever. Like, oh... Oh, yeah, I'll get it next time. And then never do it, to be funny. <laughs> uh, did you get the free Rainbow Batman? No, I did not get the free Lego Batman, the Rainbow one. Totally didn't get that one. Which one was that one in? Oh, yeah. No, I didn't get that one. I remember that one. I used to know Lego like the back of my hand, man. Lego was my jam. I bought and sold that for so many years, exclusively that. And then eventually branched off into, like, everything you see behind me. <laughs> You always, uh, you always see me as soap school. Interesting. Maybe I just know your, I, I just, your, either your profile picture or your name, something that just looked really, really familiar. I just couldn't quite place it. And sometimes I'll do that to people, like, that I think I know who they are, and then they're not who I think they are, but I'm acting like they do, like, oh yeah, this and that, and, like, I'm not that person. I'm like, oh. So I learned just kind of like, hey, be super excited, just in case that, you know. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, okay, great segue. Back into this stuff. So this, I guess I do have to move Batman. He'll be over here. So let's start with the camera. I picked this one up and actually another one. I didn't have room for it. But the two box cameras, you'll see these in a future upcoming episode of Flipping Geeks, uh, where I take you guys out into the field, show you how to like find good deals on items such as Polaroid cameras, but anything, I mean, it can be applied to anything really. But I was focusing just on like, you know, Polaroid cameras or just film related stuff so since that's what this channel has always been kind of been about um, I shot some of that so you'll see that over there but here's a little preview I got this and another camera for 20 bucks for both so $10 each they seem to work fine I haven't actually run a, or I haven't taken a picture with it yet but I've powered it up and it works I can easily just flip this and sell it for 30 40 bucks maybe a little bit more depending and then go and buy other things that i really want like film <laughs> film adds up so this is a really cool pickup F picked up locally too i didn't have to go, uh, really you know travel that far so it's pretty pretty cool uh what i'm not a lego fan but i got it because it was free 
I mean, free's always nice, but you're not a Lego fan? Oh, man, dude. I don't know if we can be friends now if you're not a Lego fan. Might have to kick you out of here. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But seriously, no Legos? Man, I I bought my... Uh, so I have a... Um, I've been riding motorcycles since I was 19, I want to say. And then I bought a brand new Harley Davidson motorcycle, Sportster, just from Lego sales. <laughs> it was technically free because I was working another job at the time. Just off Lego. It's pretty cool. But I also like Lego anyway. Uh, I like building it. I got a bunch of sets downstairs. There are some behind me, but you can't, it's hard to see. Or did I move him? I redid my background. Yeah, you can't see him anymore. I have a Wally down in this cubby. You can't really see him. But uh, I redid the set back there uh, a couple weeks ago. So I took out most of the Lego. There's not much left on the, on the table. Uh, you're old. Yeah, Lego's been around forever, man. Probably like 70s, 60s, but when they were actually like bricks. Before that, they were just wooden toys. Um, but it was like 60s, 70s when they actually turned them into blocks. So, missing out. Legos are fun. I just picked up a Lego Stranger Things set. That's over there. I'm probably going to wait to build it in October when I do my next uh, Halloween special. That's pretty cool. All right, one, he, this thing right here, not, not Batman, but this right here, this is pretty cool. It's probably one of the coolest things I picked up this week, maybe in this month. Well, this month just started. Maybe last month. Yeah, maybe last month. Um, <laughs> and that is... This is for spectra cameras. I know what you're thinking. Well, you, they don't make spectra cameras anymore. How are you supposed to use whatever the heck this is? Well, I'm here to tell you, you can still use it. These are filters for cameras, spectra cameras, more specifically. Ah. Which is pretty cool. You can actually still use these on uh, SX70 cameras. And what it is, let me get, a, get up in there for you. They go in front of the lenses and they do different things. Like here's like a prism, which is pretty cool. Um, and then here's the attachment for Spectra camera. But like I said, they don't make film for it anymore, but I'll get to that in a second. It was like a split. I'll do this, like a split one. And this is the one I'm mostly excited about. It's a star, like, the, like a star flare effect. That one I can't wait to try. And then there's, come on this prism thing, which is pretty cool. It like, splits into like five different images. Then there's this weird thing. It's supposed to add motion, but it's just a gimmick. I looked in the, the, uh, the instruction book. But the whole point of this is to say, um, I'm, gonna do this, I'm gonna do a video about this for sure. There's somebody online that has uh, 3D designed, or modeled, I should say, a, uh, uh, what's it called? A, um, a, bra a little bracket, uh, um, attachment piece four SX-70 cameras that you can connect or slide these in front of your glass lenses so you can reuse them. And a lot of, not a lot of people think that way because otherwise these would probably be pretty expensive. I think I paid 20 bucks for the full pack. And here's an example of what they kind of look like and what they do. So is the, that, this one right here does that which is pretty cool like multiplies your images and here's like how to use them but it's kind of this part is kind of irrelevant because it don't work this one i believe is this one yeah this one right here it's like a blurred oh this is one that adds motion i think this this is the motion one yeah it's the motion filter which is i think pretty cool so basically you have your model like sitting still and then you have this in front of it. It kind of makes it look like he's about to run, which could definitely be a fun creative effect. And then this is the one, I don't know, kind of gimmicky, I think. Like, what are you going to do with that? What purpose is this? <laughs> I don't know about you, but like, I don't know. It's just something about that. It just doesn't seem right. <laughs> it doesn't do it for me. So I'll probably never use that one. But this is the one I'm most excited about. This is the reason I bought it. Uh, it has those etching marks on there. And it takes your images and adds the stars to the highlights. So like uh, any bright area of 
the image is going to have a little starburst effect, which is pretty cool. And then here's one more. Oh, wait, what's this one? Oh, it's showing you what that one is again. Okay. This is this one. This one right here. But you can have some fun creative effects with that one for sure. And then, oh, that's neat. I didn't, I didn't realize you could stack them. So that, that's a good example of what, like all the super highlighted spots are gonna catch that starburst effect, which is cool. I have no idea, still, with this, why? Why would you use that red thing? It doesn't make any sense. I don't know, maybe it's just me. There's one with the starburst. Pretty cool. And then here's just some more ideas that you can do. So that's what this is. Um, you can, and you can, well, the, the only downside is you have to have a 3D printer to print this. But the, um, when I, I'm going to make a video just about this, and uh, I'll have links to that when you know that comes available. Oh, nice! You have 200 pounds of Lego. That's awesome. I used to have that much. I downsized, downsized so much. I don't have my other shot set up. I moved it, so it's over here. Um, but I have one, two, and then a bunch of mini Lego minifigures. I have two other sets over there. I have the big freaking um, Saturn wait, over here, Saturn Five Lego set. It's like four feet tall. It's pretty cool. I like that one a lot. Uh, I'm 62. I remember the bricks. <laughs> More an old school GI Joe guy. Now, when you say old school GI Joe, do you mean the little the 12 inch figures or the action figures, the little three and three quarter inch? Pretty sure you mean the 12 inch. Uh, I have them. The 3D printed thing sounds cool. Send link. I will once I make the video, which will come out. I'll probably make that in a week or two. So be on the lookout for that. Um, I've got a fun, well. And of course, all my videos are fun, but I want to take a pause, just hit pause for like a week on instant photography and do um, another video on some other stuff. <laughs> and a lot of people are like, I love your instant photography stuff. How about you do this too? <laughs> so I'm going to listen to those people, give them what they want. And it's stuff I like to do. So I have a fun, where is it? Yeah, I can't reach it. I have a, speaking of Lego, I have a Lego camera. Can you see it? Where is it? I can't reach it. It's right there. Right there. That is a Lego digital camera. It's made out of Lego. And so I'm going to do that video probably next week. So they got that to look forward to. Uh, hot. Hot chick pics. Hot chick pics. Oh, like this thing that we're talking about? That's what this is for? I guess so. It's like a peephole. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> Yes, the 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never got into those. I got some when I was a kid. It just wasn't for me. I like the action figures, the small guys. But not even G.I. Joe. I never was in G.I. Joe that much at all, ever. Probably because I never got them as a kid. I was more a Power Rangers kid. My brother was huge in Ninja Turtles, which kind of made me default into Ninja Turtles because there was a ton of of Ninja Turtles uh, toys laying around the house. <laughs> so I do love me some Ninja Turtles. Uh, as you guys have probably already seen, I tend to use most of my uh, like action figures and toy related stuff uh, as my models <laughs> for uh, for my videos, for sample photos. I have one around here, right here, actually. So I use my Paul Rudd action figure to model for the Spectra shoot I just did that came out last week. Um, and so I've used a bunch of Ninja Turtles for the makings of these. There was even some in that episode. Uh, so, kind of a nerd. <laughs> so, deal with it. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, oh, you got the original in 1964. I wasn't even a thought yet at that point in time. I think my parents were like teenagers at that point. Um, speaking of pictures, did y'all like my video yesterday? <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny, but stupid. I was like, should I even put this out? This is pretty dumb. 
<laughs> but I was like, no, I'm going to do it. I've had the idea for that video for like six months, but I've had another idea for a, a, an April Fool's joke for years and I've never done it. And uh, I was going to do it this year, but then I had this idea pop in my head a while back. I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to postpone the other one for next year and then do this one this year. So if you, if you guys didn't see it, I don't want to spoil it for you just yet because it it was pretty funny. I thought, I mean, it was dumb, but it was funny. Uh, I dig that you use toys for pics. Yeah, I think it's fun, especially when you're using macro cameras or, you know, cause you can get right up in there and actually get like the details of them instead of just like, I don't know. I have another one. Ah, damn it, it's downstairs. Yeah, it's downstairs. I've been going through and organizing all my photos. I have a lot of photos. And I've been trying to find albums to put them in. I've got stacks of albums that are just trash. I've tried different ones and haven't failed. So right now I just decided until I find a better system, um, I'm just putting them in, uh, I got these sealed like Rubbermaid containers that they go in. Uh, so I had a cool macro shot of a Lego figure um, that I hacked my, oh, I may have already showed you guys, but I used my Polaroid lab, it's around here somewhere, and used it as a camera. So I put it up close to a uh, Lego figure and took a picture and it worked. Uh, it's not practical, it doesn't quite, it's challenging I'll say, but it's pretty fun to, you know, hack stuff like that. So yeah, you'll be seeing a lot more of toy photography stuff. And I actually have been talking to a friend of mine. Um, every time he's over at my house, he'll like pose my figures. So he's a good poser, <laughs> but he, uh, I was talking to him about doing a toy photo shoot um, and if you guys seen my book yet actually you probably haven't so I'll show you right now um, it's actually over there I'll grab that in a second actually but in the book I talk about it I don't want to show you guys too much yeah I want to leave some of it as a surprise but I've already shown this page that I'm about to talk about so I will where is it there's 140 pages in this awesome book by the way Took, took me about eight to nine months to make. I'm pretty excited. Like, I'm really excited to release this. It's my first one. I want to go all out. And I'm going to be making a book a year. I'm actually going to be coming out with another book later this year. Much cheaper one. Not as a big grand scale as this one. Uh, still going to be super fun, though. Uh, that I'll announce later this year. Where is it? There it is. Um, so, I want to do a... Oof, so I have a Lego page talking about Legos, but this book right here, um, like photos like this, this is what really got me into photography when this book came out. I was already wanting to do photography, but once I got this and looked at it, it blew my mind. I'm like, you could take photos like that with Lego figures? So I went and, I mean, I got the book. I have it actually over here, I'll grab it. Um, and I was like, oh, I wanna do photos like that. So I did a few myself. Uh, years and years ago before I was like really good at photography even funny thing is I'm not even I don't even categorize myself as a photographer I'm more video I just kind of like taking photos <laughs> um, but I can do I was gonna mock up some of these I can do some of them I'm actually gonna grab it because I think it's pretty neat uh, I'll just show off a couple of them I highly recommend you, you know, getting this book too if you're into this, you know, sort of thing. Um, but it's small scenes from a big galaxy. Actually, I should do this camera. I'll just show you a page from this. It's some of the stuff is unreal. This is actually a great example of what I was trying to talk about in my book. How they lay out pages, like this one. <laughs> I don't like when they do stuff like this where it's like, this one's not so bad actually, this one's fine. But they'll lay out pages and have like the image in the crease so you can't even freaking see it. I hate that. Like I'd, ra I'd much rather it be laid out like this so you can really appreciate it. But man, just look at those photos. You know, look at that. Wait, the big glare. Some of these are really, really cool. And they're all Lego Star Wars related. And then in the back, there's like a little behind the scenes and how he did some of them. And 
they're not like super difficult to do and I want to show you guys some tricks to, to do this yourself it'll be I'll do some instant photography and as well as digital is gonna like mix it up probably sneak in some film I mean like this it looks epic right it's actually not that difficult to do that shot like at all really isn't <laughs> There's so many good ones in here. There's a particular one I was trying to find. It was of, oh, but no, this one's cool. I'll end it with this one. Glare. Isn't that awesome? So cool. But I highly recommend this book if you guys are interested in you know, getting or learning about this style of photography, but utilizing toys. So long story short, um, yeah, I want to do a toy photography shoot, and I'll make a video with that. And I'm going to have my friend Jordan over here in that video because he is an excellent poser. He can pose figures so well. I'm not. I just have my figures in, like, the hero stances and things, and that's the best I can do. <laughs> so I'm going to have him over and get to the epic poses, and we'll do some... Honestly, all of it's pretty much simple, but I'll do, like, super basic all the way up to me, like, moderate skill level. Um, and then maybe I think the hardest part of all this is just the the uh, What do you call it the uh, Effects so like sparks or snow and things which he just uses flower for his snow Sparks are really easy to a sparkler uh, fi uh, Firecrackers and just have a digital camera and just burst mode that yeah, anyway, so I want to do photo shoot like that with toys so we got that to look forward to i'm not sure when that'll be but i'm thinking well, it'll definitely be this year it'll probably be the next month or two maybe less i actually bought that instax thing that is a phone camera to add to do macros like the video yeah have you been liking it mine's still over here i've been using it still for fun photo. i had to go buy some more packs a couple days ago the thing's fun right have you tried it yet let me know. Check uh, if you don't follow me on Instagram. Send me some messages of uh, your photos. I'd love to check them out. Uh, my day job is in printing, and I started on advertising. I hate the way how people play. I know. I prefer one image exactly. So I, I talked about it when I was uh, in the announcement of the, my book, and I don't like knocking other people's work because I mean their work is great. They just sometimes don't choose the right way to like to show it off. Not that I'm doing it the right way. There really isn't the right way anyway. But I think my personal opinion is if you're laying your page out and how you're pre you know, presenting the images have an effect on the viewer or the you know, the reader, whoever you know, however you want to describe it. If your image is like in the crease of the book you have to push the pages down or something just to try and enjoy it, it takes it takes me out it takes me out of everything or if i see a page that is you know like here's a picture in the middle and it's just a white background and it's not like centered or if it's just a weird shape and there's you know different thicknesses on top bottom and sides it takes me out of it and i'm not even ocd so when I was designing my pages, I wanted to try, you know, fill the pages out, make it a look, you know, presentable, symmetrical or whatever, you know, just like pleasing to the eye. Don't leave pages blank. I, and I did leave one page this way because it was how I started the book and I thought, I'll leave it just for that sake. This isn't it, but just, I'll show you this one too. But this one I think is acceptable because look, I, I pop out of the image over here and it kind of looks like a face. So I, I that's, there's exceptions to that rule, but there's one, this page. This is how I was originally laying it out in the beginning. And this is how most people do it. Their whole zines, their whole, whole, whole photo books, just like that. And then they slap a, like a lot of money, like hundreds of dollars for their book. And then people will buy it, which is fine. I don't know, just my opinion. <laughs> Uh, oh, you're planning on doing it this weekend? The uh, the uh, the photo scanner thing? Do it. It's, it'll be fun. That's like the perfect camera. Well, if you want to call it a camera, I guess it's a camera for for taking uh, toy photos. You know, close up shots of things. At, you know, at that perspective that you don't normally see. 
but be prepared to waste a few shots until you get it quite right. You know what I'm saying? But my, my tip would be to, because I, I have it sitting right here. My tip when I'm doing it, uh, and Dave from Not Pop, he just uses the tape method, and then he'll, he'll push it up and then, or he'll line it up this way and then move the tape out of the way and take the shot. That works, I've been doing it that way too. But I have found that works so much better. It's a little more cumbersome, but put it in the operating position, just like that, that's how you're supposed to use it. Tape it to the machine itself, and then use this for your framing, because then you know exactly how much room you got. And if it crosses the line, like if it's in that plane, then you know it's in focus. You can't really mess it up. It's a little more cumbersome, and it's hard sometimes to get, you have to make sure you get light in there too. I usually use, I can't reach it, but I have a little pocket light, LED light that I shine off the side. I did a video, check it out. It's, oh, what's it called? R1, it's called the R1. You should see a few videos back. But that's my tip for taking photos like this. And fun fact, Dave sent me a photo from a thrift store yesterday. He does a lot of thrifting. He actually has a thrifting YouTube channel. We never talked about that in that video. But he found this camera on the shelf for three bucks at the uh, at the uh, thrift store. I don't know which one he was at. But, yeah. What? What? Hold up, hold up, son. Chris, did you see the Insax Mini 40 teaser? I did not. Or is that an April Fool's joke? When was it? Did it come out today? Did it come out yesterday? I was on. I was skimming through stuff yesterday. I wasn't even paying attention to product announcements. I was like, you ain't going to fool me. You ain't going to fool me, son. <laughs> so I was vigilant about not falling for stuff. Even though I almost fell for Bruce Campbell's announcement yesterday. Still holding out slight hope of it, but it's not, and it's it's fake. It has to be. So if, if you don't know, so Bruce Campbell, if you don't know who Bruce Campbell is, the king. He's back here on my shelf, right here, and he's sitting in the Iron Throne. <laughs> um, he he's gonna be in the next uh, uh, Doctor Strange movie. Cause Sam Raimi is working on it and Sam and him are best friends and Bruce is always in his movies. He took a picture of a script that says he's in there with as Ash. It's fake. It has to be fake. Um, you don't think it's a joke. Fuji I oh, IG six days ago. How did I miss this? I'll be needing to check this out. Interesting. So April 7th is when it's supposed to come out. I did not see this. How did I not see this? I'm sure I follow their page. Let me check. I gotta look this up right now. What do you? Th What's going on? Let's look. Fuji. Fuji Instax 40. Right? Oh, Mini 40. Mini 40. Wait, is there any pictures of it yet? Or they just announced like something like this is coming. Oh, here we go. I found the post. Oh, they don't show what it looks like. Okay. Uh, now teasing coming in six days. Hence on April seven, the official channels. Interesting. But it's just gonna be just a reskin of every other insects mini camera. So I'm like kind of excited because it's a new camera, but also I'm, it's. Just a, another Insax mini camera. What can they do? Unless they make it manual, but they won't. I'm still holding out for the Go, or GoPro. <laughs> the Polaroid Go. Why the heck haven't they put that out yet? Come on. Come on. I'm a little bummed that they haven't put that out yet. Um, it should, I would have thought it would have come out last month, just based on you know previous years of release dates um but it was leaked so who knows when that that mean that could have definitely have an effect on it a little optimistic much i know i just fuji man i gotta tell you they've they really are the the biggest letdowns of a lot of times they just keep reskinning stuff and making you buy it 
they put out the new square camera. It's not new, it's actually less options, as far as I know, than the previous models. The other ones have been way better. Same thing with the, the all the minis. You know, I have the mini eight, nine, eight? Shoot, I don't remember which one I have. It's great, it's perfect. It's better than all the new ones that have been coming out. So, you know. That's just my thoughts on that. Hey, what's up? Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, from Mexico. I haven't been down there yet. I was supposed to go this year. Well, last year. Last year now. Yeah, last year. But, you know, COVID happened. I didn't go. So, but howdy. Welcome. Welcome, welcome in. Uh, just going over some fun things. And, yeah, I think I've actually gone over all the major things that I wanted to go over in this video. <laughs> and some extras. Always goes over extras. Like this. Which you can see featured in the book I've got coming out. Yeah. I wish Fuji would just get on the... Whoa. I just wish Fuji would get on a new wide camera that's actually have some new functionalities. Long exposure mode. Come on. That's all That's all we need in a remote. I mean, I can, I can actually live with just a long exposure mode on a Fuji wide camera that is made by Fuji. Uh, a Fuji, I mean, the dream camera would be for them to make a SLR camera. Just saying. I mean, come on. That's not $1,400 or work. <laughs> I know. The Mint one is actually, uh, the RF-70 is like 900 But it's not, it's not SLR. It's a uh, uh, rangefinder. So you have like the ghost scene images or whatever, as far as I know. I actually almost bought one the other day. I'm like, nope. Because I actually sold my um, my Mint SLR 680, 690S, yeah, 670S, that one. Sold that one, and I was just going to take that money to buy an RF. Uh, I still have the money sitting there, and I'm, mm, I'm, I'm like, mm, maybe, maybe. Still thinking about it, because <laughs> I think it'd be really, really cool to have that camera. Uh, that one looks really fun, but it's so expensive. So why can't Fuji get on the freaking you know, bandwagon and start making some good cameras? They just don't. They just don't. Uh, I would love a good insects wide with a glass lens and controls. I know we would all would. Come on. But you got to look at the as a business. The insects mini has just, I mean, every, like, what do you call them? Like cosplay girls and things. They all use those for their, you know, uh, Patreon pictures or whatever. And the, the Insects Mini line is just a massive money maker for them. So they're just focusing on all that stuff. Because they haven't put out a wide camera in, like, many, many years. I don't know the exact year. I don't remember, I don't remember when the 300 came out, but it was a while ago. <laughs> and it's really the same exact camera from the previous lines. So... If you buy, it literally doesn't matter which one you buy, it's pretty much the same camera. Except for the AF one, which was only released in Japan, as far as I know. That's the autofocus, uh, is it the 500? 500 AF, I think is what it's called. It has autofocus, but it's, a, it's rare and it's very expensive. But other than that, it's no difference than the other cameras. So, there you go. Do it! Do it now! I'm pretty sure you're talking about the RF. Uh, pretty sure, and I do kind of want to do it. I uh, love how sharp and good my photos came out. That's right, you do have the RF. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you actually about that and ask you how it's going. Yes, I knew what you're talking about. Uh, that's why I'm psyched for the Lomo graphic back. I'm bummed that it's been delayed. It's been delayed? Yeah, I guess it, has, it was supposed to come out a little while ago. I'm pretty excited about that too. I don't have a 4x5 camera. I'm more pissed at myself. Because I had a chance to buy one for like 40 bucks not too long ago. I didn't buy it. Yeah, I was pretty bummed. Uh, I don't know why I didn't buy it. I guess maybe I just was like, this, what am I going to do with it? And then, yeah, I must have been right before they announced the back for the, 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 the instant, the Fuji instant wide film for back for those cameras. Uh, if I'd known that, I probably would have bought it. But now you, know, you try to find them, they're just, they're just going up. The prices for those cameras. Because now you can really reuse them. I think I will eventually break down and buy one. But there's so many other things that I want. And I don't think I'd use that that often. 
it just be like an occasional thing and it's like can i justify that i think i'd rather spend a lot more money and get the rf70 because i can use that way more often and travel with it try to travel with a 4x5 camera are you kidding me <laughs> that, that's a whole luggage case just for that so that's a hard justification there but it'd be cool it would be cool but man oof i just hope the rumors about kodak potentially bringing back some pack film i hope that hope rings true I doubt it though. Because I'd be buying up a lot of that. Speaking of pack film, um, I got a video coming out. Here's the photos. I'll show you some now. Why not? Uh, I still got, I still have like two pictures left in the camera. I got to finish shooting that roll soon. It's been in there for a little bit. I showed these off not too long ago, but I've been showing you off some of the new shots. Here's a couple failed. This camera that I'm using. It really just underexposes stuff. That's Abby. I don't know if Sarah is still in here or not, but she'll know. She'll know who that is. Uh, and then this is Luria and Callie. It's still way, way underexposed, and I over, I mean, I compensated for it. So this is Luria from Livestream Pros, by the way. My friend slash boss, <laughs> I guess, if you want to call that. Uh, here's Jordan. My, my boy, he's the good poser that I was talking about. He'll be, you'll be seeing him more. You'll see him in this video that, that I've already shot most of it. I still have to make more, <laughs> but uh, you'll be seeing him there. This is also Jordan. Um, this is also Jordan. That was my first shot ever. No, that was my first shot ever. This was my second shot, right? Yep, they're numbered on the back. And then that one didn't come out good, but here's the best one I've taken so far. Look at that one. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, this is a limited time experience because once I shoot all these, that's it. No more. <laughs> so I hope, I really hope, like, someone brings back pack film. Ah, it's so much fun to shoot. The experience, the quality. I mean, yeah, it's Fuji and, you know, Kodak would be a little different, I would assume. But you never know. You never know can't wait um i have a few four by five cameras since the 90s nice i uh, love the peel apart polaroid film in them sadly no more i know i know oh, i know and i i almost bought the same day i got my uh 680 polaroid 680 aka the beast actually i can actually do this now. the beast um, the uh, <laughs> this is funny. I hope I hit the right one. <laughs> I can I have headphones so you can actually hear it. I can hear it back. Hopefully that was the right one. Should be the deep voice one. But the um, the same day it was I I could have bought it. It was forty dollars. It had an instant back, a peel apart, you know. Um, but it was the Polaroid. Shoot, I remember the name, but it's like the passport one. I think it had the two lenses on it, or it might even have four. I think it just had two lenses on it. Um, and yeah, I almost bought it. It was 40 bucks. I'm like, what am I going to do with it? <laughs> I didn't have film for it. Uh, it's just going to sit on the shelf. So I passed. I wish I still bought it though, but I was, I'd already had an armful of stuff from that place. Uh, it was an old re uh, retiring photography studio. It was closing down. Uh, a lot of cool things in there. A lot of cool things, but I didn't buy that one. Yeah. Yeah. What else do you guys want to see come back? What else? Do you, what, what else what kind of type of content do you guys enjoy watching? Um, do you continue just to search for photography stuff, or what else are you watching these days? I know I've been diving deep into the uh, the series of um, what what happened to series over the what's his name Wavy Web Surf. I've been learning a lot about like just funny memes and things and the history about them. It's been pretty fun been diving right a lot into that recently <laughs> it's been pretty fun I watch other things in instant photography and photography channels I actually haven't been watching a lot of photography channels in the recent months only a couple um, and I've been this I mean I've been on the, 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 the platform here making videos for myself and other people for quite some time so it gets a little stale you know watching the same style or same type of content over and over again 
you know? So it's nice to diversify a little bit. Um, but I still watch some, like, other photography studios. I, I know some recent ones I'm really, really enjoying is Sweet Lou Photography. He's been really, really cool. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Crispy Photo, that's a good one, too. I've been uh, watching her stuff. And then there's this other one. What's your name? Her name is Chris as well. Um, she's a like a video and photography channel, mostly video. Gosh, she's fairly new too. I don't remember her last name, but she's got an awesome channel. Um, the, the production quality is like, I just I just might as well quit, just pack it up, because <laughs> it's freaking stellar. Uh, she's her name's Chris with a K. Gosh, was I can remember her full name. I just found her recently. Um, but she's been really cool. Uh, who else have I been watching that's in this world? Um, oh, I'm watching a lot of uh, Analog Resurgence. Uh, that, Noah, that's a good channel. He's got some really cool stuff. Um, but yeah, so that's that, those are there's a couple channels I've been watching lately. Uh, been really really enjoying. I'll like I'll watch Noah like late at night when I'm like trying to go to sleep. I'll just put on. Not, not that he, that's not naming against him. Not like I need to fall asleep to him and he's like boring. He's not. I'm just like, if I can't sleep, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, I'll just be like wide awake at 2 a.m. Just like watching watching his videos and then, then go to bed. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, I watch a lot of film video, uh, photo channels. Aside from Instant, I also do a lot of 120 film. Nice. I do 120. Not as much lately anymore. I need to get back to that. I still have a couple rolls left. <laughs> I still have one roll left of the uh, Fuji 400H. And I'm like, should I just sell that? Because <laughs> it's, it's worth way more than I paid for it now. Um, I don't even know what the one roll goes for right now. But I got one left. Uh, and so, and, and the stupid thing is, I was I had two boxes in my Amazon cart. I, like, it ready to hit buy it now. And then I'm like, I'll wait till next week when my paycheck comes in. And then... That week they announced the uh, discontinuation of it, and then the <laughs> nope, <laughs> gone. <laughs> like hundred dollars a box or whatever they go for now. And I was like, dang it! I should have just forked it over and bought it right then and there. <laughs> Pretty bad. Um, but I still have another box of Kodak. I haven't shot that yet ever. I, haven't sh I mostly shot Fuji um, 120, but I got the Portra 400 120, and I, I only got one camera that shoots 120. Uh, it's just my TLR camera. I want to change that. I would love to get like a Mamiya, uh, what are those, the 4B something or other? I'd love to get one of those. I think that'd be pretty fun. Uh, ooh, I just I just got into 120 film. Bought Fuji. Ooh, I don't know that film. I should look that up. That looks cool. I mean, I'm always looking for other stuff like that. But yeah, I haven't shot a ton of 120 recently because... I'm shooting so much instant film, it's just, do I really need another freaking expense <laughs> to get developed and whatnot? And I want to start developing myself, but then I'm like, man, where am I going to put like a makeshift dark room for all that? I got too much crap around here, it is, anyway, but I will eventually. I do have a 35mm uh, video coming soon. I'm really excited for that one. I'm always excited for this stuff. I like making things I like, but I got a soda can. Nope, it's downstairs. I have a soda can 35 millimeter video coming. It's a Coca-Cola can camera. What? It's pretty cool. Um, and then I've got a disposable camera uh, series coming. Not a series, just like an episode. Maybe, if it does well, maybe I'll turn it into a series because I have a couple disposable cameras, expired ones. One I found from over 20 years ago. I already sent it in. Shot a little bit of it. I didn't know if it would fit very well in the channel, but I got the photos back a long time ago. But I found a camera when I was a kid had it developed <laughs> so i might make a video about that anyway because i think it'd be pretty fun um but i still got film videos coming that's kind of what i was talking about earlier in the video about start bringing some of that stuff back because i used to do it and i want to start diversifying and i love instant photography it ain't going away at all um but i want to start bringing in some other things as well just to kind of keep things fresh keep it fresh um, I also have a roll left, but we will see F the scalpers. I know, I know, but I, you know, I had um, a series a show a channel just about buy, selling, and trading. As you guys probably have already heard me talk about, you're like, Chris, you talk about this so much, shut your freaking mouth. Um, so I'll just briefly recap it. But I did, I did something talking about scalpers. Should you do it? How to do it? 
there's a right and wrong way of doing it um, and yeah uh, it, it definitely doesn't help communities if you're scalping uh, but there's different definitions of scalping scalping in my book is you find something that's hard to find that's still current right so in my another world would be like in toy world a new hot item comes out someone finds them buys them all so no one else can get them then go sell them on ebay for double the price or sometimes more that's scalping doesn't help the community at all everyone just freaking hates every you, know, you there's another thing where if you find that new hot item and you buy a couple of them and then just throw them in your closet for a year and then pull them out and then sell them and everyone's happy is that scalping or is that an investment so i think that's a great topic that i've talked about before in the past and i think i should talk about it in this world because it's starting to happen here with uh in, in our world with discontinuing film and stuff now it, the, the price of the fuji 400 has gone down because well how, how, how do i word this the price was boom way way up because everyone's freaked out because it was discontinued and everyone's trying to sell as fast as they can so people are going to start paying a lot of money but now it's starting to level out at like a true price of what it's now considered market value of what it's worth um so is that scalping i mean it still could be because it's still only been what a month or two maybe more since they discontinued that so maybe another six months it wouldn't be definitely wouldn't be considered scalping right it would just be market value i don't know that's my thoughts uh, do, 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 do. Fuji is a six by seven range rangefinder. Oh, that one. Duh! What is wrong with me? <laughs> I have heard of that camera before. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. I film was on the brain. <laughs> uh, I am probably eighty percent instant, and the rest of various film formats. That's pretty cool. I'm about ninety five percent instant right now. <laughs> um, I've been shooting 35 on my knicker mat. I shot a couple rolls already. Well, like three rolls, four rolls. Two of them already been, didn't been developed a while back from a long time ago. I still got two more rolls I got to develop. And then I have um, that soda can camera. I'm really excited about that video. It's going to be cool. And also curious to see what the images come out. I've shown you guys that before. Here's actually the packaging. Um, it has some expired film with it, and uh, that's going to be a video too, shooting expired film. But it's literally a Coke can <laughs> that folds out. I'm, I pay a lot of money for this too, so you guys are welcome. <laughs> Go buy my book so I can afford to do dumb things like buy expensive cameras and stuff so you guys can watch the videos. It all comes back to you guys. Plus, I love enjoy, enjoy you know, making the content. It's super fun. Uh, oh, toy scalpers are the worst. They absolutely are. I yeah, it's terrible. And man, terrible, absolutely terrible for toys, for people scalping toys. Um, it's brutal. And some some countries are actually developing laws for scalping in general. Um, and I I, I strongly am like. Now, come, going back to my roots and going from my background, I was a buy-sell trader, right? I had a store where I bought and sold stuff. So for me to say this, it's kind of unique. I believe that there should be laws in, in play for scalping. <laughs> um, there, it doesn't help anybody except for individuals, especially when it comes to kids' toys. This thing right here is a child's plaything you know, quoting Toy Story there. But, and, and, I, and I know some countries are starting to crack down on it and trying to develop some laws against it and actually become a criminal act, um, especially with the rise of, um, like, the PlayStation 5 debacles that's been going on, people flipping those for ridiculous money back in, like, November. So countries were, like, noticing what's going on and seeing these people, like, making literally millions of dollars off of, uh, like, off of something that's not worth that <laughs> so i hope that something happens like worldwide i think it'd be a really really good thing it'd be really difficult to police and manage and all that um but i think it definitely could be done i think it's just a time like literally just put it in a time restraint like 
if you buy this, you can't sell it for more than it's worth over maybe an X amount of time, like six months or something. Something simple like that. I don't know. But I think something should be done. Because the toy community are brutal. It's probably one of the worst. Um, yeah, probably one of the worst like uh, issues <laughs> and the worst scalp things ever. For I mean, literally since the beginning of time, probably. If you go back to like in the 80s and the Cabbage Patch craze. Remember those videos of the, that one guy with a baseball bat? When those people were like hoarding it, he's like, get back, get back. It's like pound, like swinging his baseball bat around. These, these parents running in trying to grab these uh, Cabbage Patch kids. It's crazy. It's so funny. A uh, fun scene, yeah, but it's uh, dinner time in New Jersey. Have a great. I keep forgetting you're over in New Jersey. I was just over there a couple of times uh, last or late last year. I was supposed to go back by now, but I guess it's not happening. But if I if I ever go back, I'll hit you up, man. But hey, thanks for stopping by. Uh, send me some photos over on Instagram uh, of when you use that this thing, like the key picks or Kai picks, two picks, whatever it's called. I want to see your photos. But have a good one. Oh, this is what I was going to talk about. This is a cool thing that I picked up, uh, a tip from Dave from Noptop. He turned me on to this. This is an oil, essential oil, like, diffuser. But you just, you put water in it and you're totally fine. But check this out. You turn it on, you fill it with water, you turn it on, and it smokes. So you can have this in your photos. And this is a bad example. You can, for this type of shot, just demonstrate this. There we go. Like, it's a decent amount of smoke. It's just water vapor. But you can get this, like, in your shots, like, for macro shots. That'd look pretty cool, like, next to Batman here. Like, and then snap a shot. He's all steamed up. This was $8 at Walmart. <laughs> and it came with some oil, too. Like, like it's, like, essential oils, aromatherapy, whatever. But I'm not using it for that. I'm just using it for this. It's pretty freaking cool. If I, I need to get another one, though. I really amplify the smoke and you have to worry about like I, I don't know if you ever use a fog machine before if you run it for like a, <laughs> just a few minutes after a while like the vapor s settles and then like your surfaces are like not sticky but not not not, not, it's not even slimy it's just there's a residue all over your stuff this is just water vapor so it's just going to evaporate and you're fine you can drink it you can't even taste it. <laughs> it's too fine of vapor. But anyway, yeah, I picked this up too. It didn't come in the mail, uh, so it doesn't really fit with mail time. But it, I, I did pick it up a couple days ago. It's worth mentioning. I think he's doing a video on it. And since it's his idea, I'm going to let him be the one to make that video. I don't want to steal his thunder. But it's still worth talking about. Look at that. It's pretty cool. Anyway. <laughs> I think uh, I think that's it. I think that's all I got for you guys. You guys have been awesome. Um, last plug of the night. If you want to join the monthly print, print I almost got plint. The plint club. <laughs> the monthly print club. Uh, it's just the link in the description. You check it out. You not just get this. I mean, you get access to all the behind the scenes content um, and other cool perks that will be coming too. Um, but yeah, the first month is uh, coming out here, like this month, like right now. Well, I think I'll be shipping these out the end of April, but this is April's. And then the one month after that, I already have the first three picked out, done. And once I announce the video, which will hopefully be next week, I'll show you what you can do with these. There's a cool thing with it. Um, but yeah, so they'll be signed as well. And yeah, it helps support the channel and keeps me creating content for you and consider checking the book out you'll get the first one of those for free pretty cool um so yeah the link is in the description for this you have until thursday to put your order in for the hardback edition uh as what comes with all the cool artifacts they'll all be signed and yeah it helps me put out more books <laughs> this is my first one i'm really really excited about it and there's a paperback version as well. And uh, both of them will come with, you know, this and a fun sticker pack. There it is. Links are in the description. 
All right, guys. I think that's a good place to wrap it up. What do you think? If you guys have any questions, I end it with a cool Q and A. What you got? Got anything? Got anything fun for me? Before I wrap up, I can show this again. It's pretty cool. You guys, <laughs> you can have some fun with this one. What's it sound like? I don't know. I need to put my headphones on. All right. Oh, there we go. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and what's up, baby? Oh my God. What's up? It's pretty funny, right? I think I'm, I think I'm going to make a character out of this one. There's a slight delay from the headphones, so I thought I'm talking kind of funny. <laughs> well, not because of... Not, not just because the voice is actually funny, but I was like talking like it's really slow because it was a short delay. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's enough fooling around for tonight. <laughs> Ooh, I have not, uh, Rico, I have not tried it yet. It's just sitting in my fridge. I need to get out there and shoot that. I have not shot any black and white film ever, and I need to. I feel like it's a staple. You have to. Um, I have an idea that I can shoot some black and whites with, the black and white photos. Because so I think I should do that soon. I really need to. I've got a few boxes of that, especially the wide. How many did I get? Four boxes? I think I got four boxes of that. I don't remember. It's in my fridge. It's in the, in the fridge. And then... There's, what else would I have? There's something else. I don't know. I was going to say something else, and I totally lost my train of thought. Totally lost my train of thought, but anyway. Um, look at this. I got this thing. I don't even know if this works, to be honest. It's a flash for an SX-70. Put this on the bottom of the camera, this on the top of the camera, and you got yourself a flash. This came with a sonar version, but it's... Uh, I'm bummed because the sonar doesn't work on that camera. It's just a manual. It could probably be easily be fixed. Uh, I am selling it though for pretty cheap. If you want to check it out, there's a link in the description too. It's on the website. If you click the book link, it'll take you to the website and just go over to uh, like the rest of the store. There's some other cool things up there like merch, like t-shirts, um, some cameras. There's a fun other nerdy stuff up there too. I think I still have some of my action figures that I was selling. Some custom ones that I made from scratch. Those are up there. Um, but the camera, it, it, it's really cool. It still works. It's just the sonar is like intermittent from working. It looks like it was dropped. So it was like a little crack on the side of the sonar part. I didn't know that when I bought it. I should have paid more attention. It was a porch pickup off of Facebook. I didn't get it. I didn't have to pay too much with it. There were some other things with it too, like the flash. There was another camera and some other things. Um, so I'm not like too heartbroken over it. So, but it's pretty cool. But I need to shoot some black and white. Yeah. But there you go, guys. I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, I've got some other stuff I wanted to do today. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Really, really appreciate it. It's been fun. Always fun hanging out with you guys. I need to start making these weekly and, and then on a specific day. <laughs> I, I want to start making Wednesday the live stream days. It seems to be the best. Um, but I've been doing it more and more on Fridays. Uh, so I don't know what works best for you guys. Um, let me know. Maybe I can make that happen on that day if it works for me. When I tell people that want to start live streaming, I tell them to pick the day that works best for you, a.k.a. the streamer. And then everyone else will have to adapt. <laughs> but I, I don't always follow my own advice, and I should probably start doing that. I think Wednesdays is going to be pretty good for me as well as everyone else, it seems. Um, I've done a few of them on Wednesday, and those are usually the days that the you know the chat is popping it's popping so i think i'm gonna start doing that but fridays are always good as well so i'll make an official announcement when i can but right now they might still be kind of sporadic but i'm trying to do them at least once a week once a week so that's all i got for you thank you guys so much for well i had some other stuff but that's okay i was gonna do some giveaways i think i'll save that nobody seemed to talk about it so I'll save it for some another day. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you next week. And hit me up on Instagram. Let's chat. I want to see your photos. Just underscore another Chris. Link is in the description. See you guys later.